My name is Damon Sturdivant, and in this AIM Learn Fast video, we will learn how to adjust your channel data after a session in Race Studio. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for AIM Sport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. So Roger, when I sent you this data, I realized that some of my measure title names weren't correct. Can you show me how to fix that really quickly? And then also, while we're here, do you have like any other tips and tricks on settings and small things that we could just talk about for a minute? Yeah, especially uh, after a session, right? These are things that uh, let's talk about. We'll talk about four or five things that that um, uh, like this exhaust temperature, right? This really was cylinder head temperature. So, uh, how do we change that, right? So, if you were sharing your data or you're looking at it, you know, in, you know, in two two months, you know, down the road, did I still have that exhaust temp on it, or was that did I change that to CHT at this point? Well, so, first thing to do is change that, right? So, uh, and then we'll talk about three or four other ones, just to, to you know, kind of cool little tips and tricks on some post session stuff. So, uh, exhaust temp, it, it's. It's spelled out exhaust temp over here. It's in Fahrenheit, and right where I'm clicked, it's 30, 394 degrees in Fahrenheit. So I brought it up over on this side as well. But in order to change the name, and you can do this with any channel. It's not just uh, the analog channels you've added. It can be a GPS channel. It can be engine. The R it says RPM now. If you want that to be engine, we can change it as well. But you simply come in, and you right-click right on the name itself. So if I click, you right click on exhaust temp, it's going to bring up this measures information dialog box. And I can change to any other channel by right clicking on that one. You know, it brings it up to the one I want to work with right off the bat. But um, And exhaust temp, well, it's not exhaust temp, it's cylinder head temp. So you click on the little ellipse button here and under the features part of the dialog box, and it brings up change measure name. And we can simply come in and, and change that to cylinder head temp, CHT in this case, and click on OK. And you'll see that it changes it there. And if I apply, and I can come in there and drop that down a little bit. Oops. Because I changed the name, I'm going I'm to exit out. Because I changed the name, it's no longer open, right? So I'm going to click on CHT, reopen it back up. Uh, there it is, CHT. It's, it's all the same values. You know, it, it just has changed the name. Now let's... <laughs> That's great, and it's going to remember it for this test from now on. You can close this test, open this test up in three months. It's still going to be CHT. Of course, your Micron, your Micron 5, is still named exhaust temp, right? So uh, at some point, you're going to need to go in there and, and, and tinker with those names as well. But uh, So all tests down the road are correct, but this is going to work fine. A couple other things, though, I want to show you, you know, some other tips and tricks. If I right-click back on CHT again, and it brings open that dialog box, uh, the new software, uh, the, the latest versions of, of, of Race Studio, uh, Race Studio 2 analysis, gives us the option to come in and change a few other things. One of the things we can do is it's in Fahrenheit right now. This is a box that they've added for, for some channels. Um, in this case, it's Fahrenheit. Let, let's say I want to have it in, in Celsius. I can simply click on the C. And also decimal figures. On some channels, we can change those as well. And uh, instead of having it just even to the nearest degree of Celsius, I'd like to have it to the, you know, show me one decimal after. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to hit apply. And let's even apply an exit. And you can come in. You see that's the scaling changed. So we can simply, you know, click real quickly and, and see what the, you know, the auto scale function by double clicking in the scale bar over here on the side or come right back in and open that same box again and we can check you know set the plotting scale from zero to let's say you know 400 and click on apply and exit and so we can change the scaling there so we can do some things visually that make that work pretty well and you can see not only is it in celsius now but it's also showing it us to uh, the the value to us with one decimal place a little bit more granularity for some things especially with pressures and some other things you want to see a, a little bit more you still wouldn't want to see a temperature to the nearest tenth of a degree in celsius but uh, fuel pressure is one that's you know sometimes i'd rather have a little bit more uh, more accuracy or you know perceived accuracy that way so the other thing we can do is 
is uh, so we just change the the type there and and the and the display. We change the name. Uh, there's another thing that's inside of that that measures box. I'm going to click on RPM just for to to show this next one. And so now I'm looking in the measures information box and we're looking at RPM. There's a box over here off to the side that. Uh, it's the it's we call it the value box, right? There's there's two things, really three things that it does here for us. Let's say, let me get cancel out of that. Let me turn on RPM, turn off CHT, so we're actually looking at the value. And you know you can see that it goes you know six thousand, you know sixty what sixty three hundred, and you know in a low of of uh, thirty nine hundred. Let's say on your micron, with the inductive wire, you connected that thing and you. And the motor actually isn't running at 6,000 RPM. This is a high, you know, high revving two-stroke or something. It really is actually a little over 12,000. It's double what we're actually seeing. And we messed up on the setting, right? It happens. So you, uh, you darn, you could sit here and you could think about this. And everything you see there, you could come up and say, oh, that's a double. And I don't do math in my head. So, you know, that's 12.4 or something, right? Or we could come into the RPM. We could right-click, get that same dialog box. I'm going to move it up to the corner a little bit. And this scale box right here, this, this, the A is the value of the channel, and we multiply it times this whatever value you have in this box. And right now it's one, so it's one to one. It's 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 reporting to us exactly what it saw. But if uh, if it really was running about 12,000 or double what we recorded, we can simply put a two in that box, and I can click on apply. And you'll see that the entire RPM just doubled itself, right? It's just a scale. So value times A, right? So so boom, we just jumped that up. Well, what if it actually was, we plugged it in like it was a two-stroke, and it was actually a four-stroke, and it actually was half of what it was. So let's go back to one just to show you real quickly. Boom. And then let's say it, instead of 6,000, it actually was 3,000 RPM. You could come in here and you could do you know, uh, 0 0.5 and we could hit apply. Boom. And now it's half of what it was. So if you if you messed up on that setting on your micron for the first couple times you ran it, you could you can still fix the data. It's not uh, we have a lot of tools that are available to you. I'm going to put that back to uh, back to 1 and uh, and scale it correctly. And then talk about what the B box is. It's A and then B. Value times A plus B is the formula that's using of these two values. So right now it's 0. B is a shift. So let's say, that, you know, I probably wouldn't do this on RPM very much, but maybe a steering sensor that we forgot to calibrate and it was always 10 degrees off. We could put a, a 10 in this and we would actually put everything back to, you know, we can recalibrate afterwards. But let's say you're sharing data with somebody you know, and uh, they want to see your data and you don't know, maybe you don't want them to know exactly what you did, don't want them to, you know, maybe you don't want them to understand what your gearing is. You can come into this B box or this this uh, the shift box, and let's say we put an extra thousand. So whatever value you've got here, and right here we're about six thousand RPM, right? So I put a I put a thousand in here. We could hit the apply button, and now you're in, you, if you're sharing some of this data with somebody, they're, they're going to see it as seven thousand RPM instead of six thousand. That's what the B does. I probably would never do that, but but uh, you that's what that formula does, right? So you could you know, come back and put that back to a zero and apply that. Those that and the other one is reverse channel. If you have a lateral G sensor or a steering sensor and you got your units mixed mixed up and when you're turning left it's giving you positive numbers instead of negative numbers, you could simply click this and it would just reverse that channel. Not that won't work very well with the RPM channel, so I'm not going to do that. But uh, but uh, that's what the reverse channel does. So that value A times uh, you know value times A plus B allows you to modify your data if you kind of messed up on your on your original setup. Again, if it's messed up, you want to go back into the original device and fix those things, so you don't have to do this every time, obviously. So I'm going to exit out of that. And the last thing that I get a calls on, not all the time, but you know, if you've updated your software, or somebody got in there and you had one test that you wanted to look at things in metric values and you, and you change your preferences, we have an overall preference setting. I get calls from some guys every once in a while, Roger, my data's in, in kilometers per hour and I want to see it in miles per hour and I and I don't know how to change it. What they'll do is they'll come up here to the file pull down menu and preferences, which is where it's at, but it's grayed out. Because this is a doing an entire um, uh, the entire database behind the scenes changes it to all your preferences, it you have to have your tests all closed. So I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna hit I'm gonna close this test. Then we're gonna come back to file and preferences. And here you can change your entire database to read out 
in kilometers per hour. Let's say you like you, you you'd like to use the metric system for your speed, right? And that, I'm going to leave it at Fahrenheit and, and and PSI for the for the pressure units. And we're going to click on OK. And then we're going to go right back into that test again, open it up, and you can see now that your speed is in kilometers per hour. So you, that that uh, preferences, you know, file preferences is how you change the entire database. So there's some there's some quick tips for you on on uh, understanding how to fix a couple channels, maybe a channel name, you know, change some scaling if you forgot to calibrate something quite right, and then change the overall uh, units of the, of the of the entire database. So a couple quick tips for you. So that's the end of this Aim Learn Fast video. We've been taking comments from throughout social media and trying to come up with new topics that are most useful. So feel free to leave a comment below or get a hold of us on Facebook or on Twitter and just let us know any questions you have or any things that you like about these videos. We try to put up new videos every Tuesday, so just stay tuned to our channel and come back for more videos.